All right. You got it. Got it. I did it. So welcome to the July 19th, 20th uh, Chaos Metrics Models meeting. If you could add yourself, that would be great. To our list of attendees. Um, there are a couple things that we'd like to talk about today. Um, so we have a, a couple different uh, metrics models that had ended up in the, in the minutes and I have been recording those and we can talk about those a little bit. Um, I think there's a few, there's a PR that I'd like to talk about just a little bit and Emma also responded, I don't know if you all saw that, but Emma also responded to the funding question, Sean, that you had put in Slack. I think you had put it in there or maybe you did. I, mean, I think you we might have. Okay. I know that uh, Microsoft did offer us some credits, but they're like not enough. Oh no, this was in response to a metrics model question. Oh, okay. Yeah, something something kind of different. So all right. All right. Um well why don't we go ahead and, and get started? So um why don't we take a look at, at new metrics models? that are coming out. So I have one here, which is, I think I got the right one, a community service, community service and support. Um, does anybody want to comment on this? Whoever yeah, actually I provide the, these two new metrics model, which, okay. uh, which actually belong to the uh, context area ecosystem um, in one dimension productivity. So uh, these two metrics model is used to reflect uh, uh, the uh, some some service or final output provided by the project or the com community so we used to this these two metrics model to describe those two final results one is code the other is service provided for the contributors and so uh, first it uh, it's a service and the support provided by the community. Uh, actually, this metrics model, um, the documentation work is ongoing, and mm -hmm. um, and I welcome everybody who have interest on this metrics model could uh, could work together with with, with us, um, and uh, on on the definition and the uh, use stories. Of course, uh, if you think you would like to add add more metrics in this model. Uh, if it's reason, uh, reasonable, yeah, please add it. Uh, for us, uh, we, we mainly uh, concentrate on the trace data, but uh, uh, also include a small a group of other uh, data. So here uh, we focus on the issue, issue related metrics like uh, uh, time to first response, uh, the whole issue open time, and also the issue comments count. The first three metrics is really are related to the issue handling efficiency. Uh, the next day is about the CI building. We care about how long it take for one uh, for one for one uh, CI running. So uh, it's used to measure the CI uh, running, uh, CI machine uh, execution <laughs> efficiency. So, so those like Docker builds or um, whatever the continuous integration suite might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To build a binary <clears throat> during the CI build. And the, the, the next part is about a pull request or change request in the different host platform. So it's about uh, uh, the, the pull request uh, open time. And, and, uh, and next it's, um, it's about a mail thread count. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's used to des describe the collaboration through some channels. Here is, it's about mail. Uh, we will, we can actually to analysis those data uh, using the mail kind, uh, this data data source. The last one is uh, is event count. We used to 
um, describe. Oh, sorry. The the the, the last, we, we still have two. The last one. Uh, the the event count is about the event hold online or or offline event in the recent days or like uh, in the last ninety days we have. And the change request reviews is also related to the. Uh, uh, change request reviews also related to the pull request. It um, uh, determines the average number of review counts per request. It's similarly like uh, issue issue uh, uh, comments. Uh, so I use those metrics to describe uh, the service and the support provided by the community that contributors can directly perceive those uh, service and the contributions. And uh, we, uh, so we think of the, that is the you know, one type of op output provided by the community. So we put it uh, under the uh, ecosystem productivity, those part. So Yuhui, this, thank you for doing this. this um... This feels like it's about me as a community member understanding the community that I'm part of, or me as a new member trying to understand the community that I might join. Is that correct? Uh, yep. And also, that's as a as a con community member, just uh, the support and the value that community can give us because all the things it's about it's about the feeling about uh, when, when i contribute the code uh, develop, as a developer in this community okay. what kind of support can provided by the community yeah are they reactive to things i create I'm just taking some notes I mean, these are exactly the kinds of metrics, like these are almost exactly the metrics with some additions that uh, we put into Augur's initial visualizations because they are very good indicators of how, how much a community is prepared to grow. Responsiveness matters for uptake of new people. Is there a, a case? Sean or Yahoo or anybody to be made here that this is also about users of the software. They may not participate, but they want to understand the dynamics of the community if they're going to use the software. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. it would, uh, I would certainly be interested in these statistics if I was considering whether or not to use uh, like a new library or another, incorporate another project into my own. Right, with no intention of joining the community. Right, like, just of using that, that what they built exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. The things I want to focus on, uh, I want to um, mention is that um, I uh, the things here is a directly support that um, a developer can perceived uh, f from the community and. Um, that means that, uh, of course, community and our project could provide a lot of service and uh, like um, and and support, but which is under the background or that uh, uh, user cannot uh, see it directly. For example, we provide a lot of infrastructure support, but um, right. uh, the things developer can directly perceive is the service. Um, uh, to f reflect through some things like CI running time. If you enhance the infrastructure investment for this uh, community, um, which can, of course, can enhance the whole CI running time or efficiency directly uh, fueled by the uh, developers. So, this stand from the view of the developer joined this community or who perceived observed outside of this community through the data. Okay, that makes sense. All right. 
Um, cool. So thank you. So the, the request, Yehui, is to ask people to try to contribute or to contribute to just the text, building up the user stories, yep. thinking about the metrics, and so on and so forth. Is that right? Yep. yep. Sean, you had mentioned that you do have something similar to this in Augur. Is that correct? We have, yeah, like the visualization APIs cover a good deal of this territory in terms of pull request responsiveness. Um, issue responsiveness, I don't think they care as much about. I don't think that's in there. But and then new contributors are the, is the other thing. So we've definitely done issue responsiveness before. We're doing it again. I, I don't know that. Um, I'm sure it's a metric in the Augur's API. I just have to look it up. OK. Uh, OK, great. Um, all right, cool. Let's. Can we move on to the next one, Yehui? Code quality? Sure. sure. OK. So here is code quality and also yep. for Yehui. So you yeah, want yeah. Actually, though, uh, those uh, metrics they include uh, service and support. Also, we discuss a lot with uh, with Liang, uh, the professor from Nanjing University. We discuss this as also as a, uh, another kind of uh, output uh, provided by the uh, uh, provided by the community. One is a uh, code, the other or, or we can call it a soft artifact. The other is a stories. So here, the, this matrix model is used to describe the, one of the most important uh, final output provided by the community. That is code. So we use a lot of uh, we use different uh, perspective mm -hmm. to describe the code. Uh, here, the first uh, matrix model we provided here is used the code quality. Also, we can uh, provide some other. Uh, uh, pers uh, perspectives to describe the code. Uh, for example, code, sec code sec security or code compliance. But the, in the first time, here we want to provide uh, code quality at our first measurement around this area. Okay. And, and here uh, also. Uh, just like uh, the service and support, uh, it's uh, also it's ongoing work, but um, uh, I still welcome um, the guys who have interest on this matrix model could uh, work into that together with us on this matrix model. In the under this matrix model, we we uh, have uh, several metrics. For example, uh, the contributor count. Uh, I uh, for for some single metrics, I add some explanation on that. For example, the first one is the contributors, and uh, so that means the eyeballing the gold uh, as my as many uh, contributors join the metrics model, which could uh, showing which could show the uh, capability of the test. Uh, the second is the download. It's also the, uh, one kind of indirect mirror of the software approval. So we're using the download download count frequency to uh, mm. to describe that. Are you, able to, the, are you able to yeah. get that data for on Giddy for projects that you don't own? On GitHub, uh, they won't expose that API if you don't own the project to get the download or the clone data. Actually, we can we can mm. get it from from um for for the gate we can get the get type it. get okay. get the tags excellent uh, release the release the tags to describe yep and also in you know, another way uh, for some for some project they would produce the you know the the, the docker image so we can perceive this do uh, perceive this data from the docker hub okay to see how many Docker images have been downloaded. Um, and the next one is code change commit. Uh, it's similarly like 
like uh, how many data, how many code has been committed in the past 90 days. Um, uh, the, the next is a uh, test to say, uh, determine that if the code, the most recent, um, like um, 30 commit contains CI test. That's one, one way to mm. measure the code quality. The next is the change request reviews. Uh, you know, the more reviews, the more code quality can be secured. So the, the, the inclusion of CI tests in the last 30 commits, that presumes yeah. a, a level of continuous project feature integration yeah. where they're adding new features that they need to write new tests for, which is probably valid in a lot of stages of a life cycle, but maybe not all. It may not yeah. be, it's more or less useful for projects that are pretty mature, for example. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, the code review, uh, you, you know, uh, we actually, we have two levels. First is the most recent commit, have at least one review comment. The second level is that if merger is different from the committer. So, the next one is a technical uh, fork. So it determines the average number of fork counts per week in the past 90 days. So more fork means more people care about this project and they would contribute back to this project. But uh, of course, uh, if you fork the code, that means you have to contribute back to the code. But um, if you wonder co contributing code, you have to fork, right? Uh, the last one is the uh, code change lines. You, um, we count this length of code to determine uh, how many code has been changed, updated in the past 90 days. But uh, I I would give it this matrix uh, like a very low threshold because uh, it's kind of difficult to this um, to to say that the more less code contributions means high quality of the code, but uh, anyway, it's a, it's one uh, index or matrix for the code quality. So I I added here. So that's all the metrics I uh, I added to this matrix model so far. Cool. So. I think, Sean, to your comment of the CI tests having some like relevance in different stages of the project, is that right? I mean, they're, they're just going to see that metric won't look as good if it's a very mature project because there'll be no reason to create new tests if you're not creating new features. And you have, and I guess the assumption is you already have good test coverage, which may or may not be the case. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this 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 matrix just to measure if it has CI test or not, um, we, we, because for the different projects, um, it's kind of difficult to see if it already added uh, more test for these new features, or add more test for this bug fix, or. This is running the, the fixed scope of the test just to, to secure the legacy bro broken. So in, in current way, uh, we found is only to see, if, okay, if this uh, project has introduced the CI test into this uh, pull request every time. Okay. But maybe in the future, we have more more ways to, to detect different ways to see for the different bugs and features. Well, and, and if, if inclusion of, I mean, the, the other thing is including CI tests is good software engineering practice. And it almost certainly indicates a higher quality project if there is more testing. And if there's testing regularly contributed, I think I, I work with another group of people who are developing open source software engineering curriculum and the general consensus seems to be there is not as much software engineering discipline in open source as one might think. Exactly. Yeah. 
but I, I also think of the test coverage. But mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the only the very big project community has such a capability to introduce this, you know, the test yeah. coverage into their communities. And the, most the, of them. Yeah. yeah, the tools are highly language specific too, which is the obstacle we've run up against. Yes, yes. So Sean, I was thinking CI build, CI test and download. Are these candidates for this would be new metric? I mean, I think they evolution. Would be yeah, actually, they are. <laughs> so ironically, <laughs> yeah. yes, they are. Those are uh, absolutely um, evolution. So download new CI tests and then CI build time. Okay. And then just go. I'm just going to add that to the agenda. <laughs> the funny thing is, you we, we were just talking about the evolution working group and the fact that there don't seem to be a lot of new metrics being developed in the evolution working group and. And in the same day, we just picked up three. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's why I was laughing. Yeah, yeah. Or we were laughing. Because I, I'm trying to, I'm looking through all the metrics we already have currently, but yes. we couldn't find anyone have no. relevance. With Those are not, metrics. they're not there. Yeah, I don't Absolutely. think we've ever talked about nope. CI stuff in a metric. We've talked about it and not done it. Okay. But so it doesn't exist okay so i think the workflow here would be then that we can all as part of the metrics model group continue to help with yahoo on the definitions of the metrics models and then sean i'll start joining evolution and you and i can start kind of organizing work around a couple new metrics within the evolution working group so that they would be available here. Sounds right. good, it sounds yep. good. Does that make sense, Yuhui? Yep, yep, yep. thank you okay. so much. Yep, okay. Um, adding it to the agenda for evolution. Perfect, thank you. Okay, great. Um, anything else, Yuhui, on code quality or community service and support? No, as far, no, thank you so okay. much. Okay, you bet. Um, the other was that uh, Shoya had brought up, I think it was, is Shoya on right now? Yeah, you're on. Um, I think you brought it up in the Asia Pacific oh. call. Did you bring this up in the um, Asia Pacific call? I forget. Sorry. Yeah, I raised this model on the last Asia Pacific meeting call. Um, and um, so during this model, uh, what we really highlight is uh, a way, uh, a, a new perspective uh, through network to organizing data. And um, as Sean has commented, that might be a common algorithm to answer different questions. So uh, uh, I want to um, um, introduce an, um, Frank, who is actually a senior PhD from our lab and uh, the real person who is really working on the uh, graph mathematical uh, um, graph mathematical model and um, who is also on the call today um, and uh, he could elaborate more on the some of the mathematical properties and he also um, yeah uh, implement some uh, presentations like uh, this one is using the chaos event event data to uh, yeah so Frank might um, he he can elaborate more on 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 this. So welcome Frank. Would Frank say something to us? Hey, hello everyone. I'm Frank and I'm from China. I will open my camera. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you, Frank. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So, did you want to elaborate on some of the work that you're doing here? Uh, We'd love to hear it. So, I don't quite follow uh, what's the progress in the last pers uh, last meeting. In the well, show you. You can say it if you want to. 
Shoya just introduced this metrics model yeah. in the last yeah. meeting. So, and then there was a conversation. Sean, you had some comments just about how we might come about understanding influence. Do you remember that? Yes. And so it was kind of just a preliminary conversation about what influence can be and how we might come to understand um, influence. And so, Sean, do you remember if you had, do you remember your comments on that? They're in Slack. Um, you could look it up to remind yourself. I'm going to have to do that. <laughs> so, Frank, it was just a, it was a preliminary introduction as to how we might understand influence. Okay. So, and, actually, mm. so yeah, in, influence is, is uh, it's a complex thing. So I'm a, let me see if I can find my comments. <clears throat> yeah, what we might want to dis discuss here with the community is uh, 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 one is uh, what, in what kind of uh, form that we want to push this matrix model mm -hmm. forward, like yeah, as an interest influence influence model that apply to some kind of um, scenario to describe the influence of a developer or a project or um, yeah I think yeah so highlight the the, the graph yeah the, the way of the graph to organize organize data this is a place where we've we've found and I've actually wrote a paper with some people about this, that developers who have a lot of followers, for example, happen to have a lot of influence when they move from one project to another, other people tend to go with them. Yeah. Um, and so when I see, I mean, all of the things here are, I think the right things for influence, because obviously you have to commit code to have influence and serve in other ways and then the question is how much influence do you have on a project and that can be judged by activities like you're doing here but i think there's also a component of of um i don't know if giddy has an equivalent but github followers we've definitely seen a relationship between that and how much influence developers work might have Yes, I, I, I see that actually we don't have a quite uh, 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 exact name for this metric. I use influence because influence is all, always used in the research in papers uh, for centrality in a centrality of the node in a graph. Yep. Actually, I, yeah, so the, the influence, what the influence means is different. Uh, from the construct constructive method of the graph. Yeah, what relationships are and what nodes are and what weight you use to uh, calculate. So the influence is different from all of this. So actually, I don't know if influence is the exact word should be used here because it may mislead because others may think influence is not the, uh, is a compl complex com concept here. I mean, I think it's it's only complex because web property owners use the term influence to describe how much effect different members can have. Like there's social media influencers, that's actually a thing in the United States. And so I think that word is a little bit conflated because of its yeah. other uses in the context of the internet. I do think it's, it's a word that means exactly what you're talking about here, though. Um, yeah. It's influence. It is. In, it's maybe it's project influence or oh, oh, I don't know. Influence is a fine name because it, it's already contextualized in open source. And these things, it, it, I mean, essentially the the story that you're trying to tell with this these metrics, which is different than some of the other stories that we tell with these same metrics is you're applying them to tell the story of which developers are most influential. So the way that you part, you know, slice, prioritize and weight the data 
would be different than if I just want to understand the general responsiveness of a project. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same metrics, but I think I think you're applying. I think implicitly they are applied differently in what I'm reading here. So Frank, do you do you have a focus that you're working on here? So because when I read these user stories, listening to you and Sean talk, it's about the influence of a person. Mm -hmm. um, so but like through. some of these other user stories are about the influence of a project within an ecosystem, which seems pretty different. Um, uh, there are there are a paragraph in the documentation uh, below, and there is a, a advantage of the yeah yeah still. Uh, going down for a while. Is that Gaffy? A little bit, yeah. Uh, still going down. Yeah, this is advantage of the algorithm and the stability and the robustness is the mathematical property of the algorithm. And uh, going down for, for a bit, there is a uh, counter cheating and uh, co calculation. Co calculation is very important here because we can calculate the influence property of the, all the nodes in the graph. It's depending on what, how, how can, how you construct a graph. If you use developers and repos as a nodes of the graph, then we can co calculate the influence metric for developers and repos in the same time. And if you add issues and change requests in the graph as the nodes, and even we can uh, give the influence of the issues and change request nodes in the same time. It's a co-calculation uh, method, yeah. So does that help me understand, does that allow me to see single developer influence as well as say organizational influence? Um, actually, uh, in my work right now, I have, I can give the uh, influence, uh, in, influence of the uh, every repo and every developers in the whole ecosystem. Uh, oh. Here, the ecosystem means the, the all GitHub, every developer and every repo, yeah. So then I could look at, at the influence within a project as well as across projects. Is that right? Yes, yes. OK, interesting. Yeah, everything is connected here. There is a very, very large graph uh, on GitHub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I would imagine. <laughs> I, I have the numbers. I have the numbers uh, uh, up a bit, up a bit. Go up a bit here and uh, yes, go up a bit. Yeah, here, here we we will have a. This is a demo graph for chaos arc in the all history, uh, from uh two thousand fifteen, and we will have a graph with more than uh sixty uh uh thirty six million nodes and. Uh, uh, 67 million relationships in this control method for all GitHub repos if we only count issues and PRs related activity. Yeah. So what is, what is the activity? <laughs> what is this graph telling me? So is that uh, is? this is uh, uh, the blue nodes is developers and the pink nodes are repos in chaos, chaos okay. org. So uh, different people contribute to different repos and those uh, who contribute a lot in a lot of uh, repos in chaos org may have a more influence in the chaos community yeah, yeah this is a basic concept those are probably the nodes that are encircled by the pink project yeah yeah so i mean the ones in the middle would be the most influential people probably uh, uh, this is based on the uh, layout algorithm. Okay. Yeah, it's a, a false 
it's using yeah. force directed uh, algorithm to uh, to form this image yeah and we, we have a influence metric it's a, a page rank like algorithm in a very complex graph for like a heterogeneous network yeah so is there a way for me to understand influence from this it seems uh, difficult yeah we mean this image we don't uh we don't uh, inject the influence metric the result i see the, yeah so the nodes are uh, have the same size so you so we should give a more uh detailed image with the size changed uh by the influence metric i think yeah and you can have a more and this yeah. is and these are these are based on sorry for moving up here these are based on these metrics the the association with change requests issues is that right yeah we use uh, issues and change requests related activity to construct okay. a relationship between developers and the repos okay and so the look here is specific not this one but i'm sorry for all the moving but this one is this is specific to the chaos project yeah this is a, a sample data for chaos arc it's okay. not so a complete uh, complete uh, uh, image because there yeah. are too many nodes yeah okay um there was a comment in the chat too from Liang. It said the weight of a node in a graph. Do you want to comment on that? Oh uh, yeah, in the traditional page rank, uh, we have no weight for for a node in the graph because the uh, the influence for a graph or a centrality for the node is calculated according to the uh, graph only in the graph. But we developed a new algorithm. We can inject uh, initial value, initial weight value for nodes, and it can be used to uh, calculate the final influence or centrality value of the node. Uh, like if you cannot have the uh, exact relationship in the metric, like uh, you only have a download count but you don't have the down you don't know actually who downloads your repo then you can use download count uh, in the weight of the node as an initial value but not in uh, as a relationship in the in the graph so so it, it's actually i think this is a very flexible and extendable method uh, uh, using graph as a as a method to calculate the results, but not very specific in how to construct and how to uh, calculate the results. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I noticed right? that I noticed that the size of the each circle is the same. So yeah. is it just one example, or uh, in more complex example, the the node the node size means. The, the, the influence oh, no uh, no no the node size is uh it's not uh not meaningful just here yeah it's not meaningful okay. here because okay. we need we need a new a uh, render tool to give the graph because uh this is a uh this is a, a this is image from the neo 4g database and the default uh tool cannot adjust the uh, node size based on the uh, on the property of the node. Here, we, we we can use eCharts next time and inject the results of the uh, inference metric, and everyone can can see if it makes sense. Yeah, right. Conceptually, it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, or if that's worth. And I, and I think obviously just at some point displaying the nodes and edges is more or less useful as the network gets bigger, but knowing who the most central contributors are for each repo and for the project as a whole is, is valuable. We could list that in a table 
mm-hmm. using network statistics. Yeah. Uh, I have I have one question that the currently the this uh, graph is showing the current influence of the node, no matter its project or people. So does it does it have a do we have a trend, trending graph to showing uh, for one node uh, the the influence of these people or, or project is changed over time? Yeah. Yes. Of course. This is a time series data because here is a. a a static graph, static image. Uh, so I can I cannot show the training of the nodes, but if we have the tools to uh, realize this, so we can have the trends. Actually, uh, uh, down a little bit in this documentation, there is a graph. Uh, yeah, this chart is the trending of the uh, <coughs> Hadoop, this, this ripple. And the three lines above is activity, which is a statistical method. And the uh, open rank is the, uh, that's we, how we call the influence metric in our lab. And it's, it's uh, in the uh, below. And the three open rank uh, is very, almost the same. So it's not quite sensitive to the parameters used to calculate activity. Actually, we use issues and uh, PRs related events uh, to calculate the activity metric. And we use different parameter size, uh, parameter sets like, like a linear sets, so it's one, two, three, four, five, and the power sets, it's one, two, four, eight, uh, 16, and the Fibonacci okay. uh, set, like one, two, three, five, eight, 11. And the activity is the statistical method the three lines is different uh, because the parameter changed. And in the, uh, uh, in the influence metric or in the graph method, all three lines uh, are the same because it's, it's, it extracts more information from the uh, structure of the graph but not just uh, a statics number. Yeah, I think this is also an uh, advantage, yes. So I, I could imagine that this trending uh, mm-hmm. paragraph is uh, is one perspective of the bow graph, right? That uh, that node connection graph. Yeah, this is the influence result of the one node, which is Apache Hadoop in the mm-hmm. in the whole network, and we expand it in the time series. So okay. it's uh, going a training chart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see. So this is the, it's a, a, a look at a single node at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A single node in the history. I see. Okay. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. And there is another property. It's a robustness. Uh, in this graph, we, in this chart, we can see uh, we lost half a month of data in October 2021 uh, in the ending of the charts because we are using GH archive as our data source and uh, some, someone's familiar with that may know yeah. that the, the, the service down for half a month the last year. And yeah. actually it's very, uh, very disastrous for our statistical results because we lost half month data. But in the graph, me- graph methods, uh, the result is not quite influenced, uh, is not quite changed uh, because we use relationships rather than uh, rather than a statistical numbers. So that means we can use sample data to calculate the results and the, the results are still convincing. We don't need all the data. If we lost data for all repos and developers for a, a range of t- small range of time, it want to influence the final results. Yeah, it's another advantage of the of the algorithm. I think uh, the robustness here to is to describe the robustness of this matrix model. It's yeah. not that a matrix model to describe the robustness of the project, right? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a robust, okay. robustness of the match model or the algorithm. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Ming, did you have a comment? I see you're unmuted. Are you good? Okay. Um, so just, so would it be, I'm gonna go back up to the top, sorry if I'm making, so is this um, maybe not, within because it's looking within a particular project this isn't looking at chaos's influence within some other collection of projects is that correct uh i'm not sure what you mean because so the chaos has a it's a bound we're a, we're a bound project we have a we have a box around us which is github at this okay, point yeah. we can look at the repositories and the people within that box um, but this isn't showing me the influence that chaos has on on other projects it's not showing me the influence that chaos might have on the auto grade linux project for example uh do you mean the other platform rather than github or other repos on github just completely other repos on github so could i see that like so chaos is a project yes. and we're trying to okay so we can see it that. can yeah it can compare a project um the influence of a project compared to another project so basically developers and projects they are all present okay. in yeah okay um it it might make sense to first focus on at least from a metrics model perspective the influence within a particular project just like it's the influence as you were showing here like the the nodes because this is bound not this one but this is bound to the chaos project yeah, this is a demo for chaos org. Actually, if you extend this graph, uh, if you extend every node and find out the related repos of, of them, then maybe you all get all the GitHub nodes and all the GitHub developers in this graph. Yeah. Because yeah. we have a research on this because uh, about 19% of the repos in GitHub is connected by developers activity. That's interesting. Yeah. Right. I'm just thinking from a, a narrative perspective, just to t what we tell people in a single metrics, we could have multiple metrics models about influence. Yeah, we might want to have just some smaller slices for one yeah. metrics model and then another one for a, a cross group. It was just a thought. I don't know what other people think of that, but I, yeah, I think this is very tricky because in this graph, we can have the influence of uh, developers and repos in all the, all the GitHub, yeah. But in another uh, constructive methods like the image above, yeah, the this one is used to the data from Chaos Metrics repo, and we add PRs and issues in this in this uh, graph. So this one will give the influence. Uh, of the developers and the issues and PRG in this repo. It's very different uh, from the constructive method of the graph. And right. I think in this one, I'll give, I give an um, algorithm to, uh, to calculate the centrality in the complex graph, but the, the meaning or the narrative of the uh, influence metric is different from the constructive method, yeah. Okay. And it's, I think, if you're going to weight edges based on different activity, you can, you're also able to compress some of the meaning and explain how you compressed it. So if you yeah. weight certain activities more than others, the connection between a, a person node and a project node is, is a calculation. And as long as we describe the calculation, then you can create kind of a composite network, yeah. weight, which is, I, I think, where you're trying to head here. Yeah, this is also should be considered because uh, different parameter sets is 
will influence it will affect the results but not quite much yeah okay well this is a, a great discussion we have <laughs> things that we didn't get to but that's okay we yeah. made it we made it to here <laughs> yeah well that's it's a start and uh, we can pick it up in two weeks and so yeah we're even talking about it in the asia pacific call there is yep. something i do we do need to talk about the tags but frank if you could continue to i mean continue to think through this and i mean i think we'd be really happy and with shoya as well it's awesome to, to think through this yeah for sure so i'm not not cutting you off here we're just at the end of time for this meeting okay. understood i'll get get more examples and i'll get more of realization in the documentation yeah okay great well that, we look forward to talking about that more okay. thanks frank thanks. and thanks you for bringing those other metrics models forward and thank you for everybody for joining us um, on the call. It's great to see all of you. And we'll see some of you probably in the Asia Pacific call next week. And if not, we'll see you in the metrics model call in two weeks. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.